members. Um, before I um, ask Maliki to present this application, um, can I ask any members, or give members opportunity as, as they declare an interest in this? No? And this, similarly, like the, the other application, um, it's an outline application. Members have the options, the, the similar options to the previous application that are available to members now. Um, members can um, choose to accept officer's recommendation or not, or do the fair application for further information. Um, so I just want uh, to, the, like like before, um, members have the con uh, have the options. They place conditions um, on any um, decision that they, they come to. So I just wanted to draw members' attention that that's that, that all possible that all possible outcomes are available to members in relation to this application. Um, so our application is LA 11 2018. 0186 and it's an outline application um, for a multi-sport indoor and outdoor facility um, and it lands north of Holly Cross College and in Strabarn and it's Maliki that's going to take us through them. Um, thank you Chair, good afternoon members. Um, item 2 is uh, LA 11 2018 0186 um, 0 um, it's an outline application, proposed multi-sport indoor outdoor facility, circa 45,000 45, square feet, carbon wellbeing centre, community youth facilities, full-size indoor pitch, fitness suite, sports hall, conference and office accommodation, exhibition and event space. Uh, it's located at lands due north of Holy Cross College and due south of Arnally Park, Strabane. Um, the recommendation is to refuse. Um, the site uh, location I said above, um, the site lies to the east of the A5 Straban Bypass. Um, Arden Lee Park lies uh, to the north of the site, immediately to the north of the site, and the educational uses of Holy Cross Colleges lie to the south, and Knockerville School to the east, uh, as well as a small uh, element of residential at Melman Gardens uh, uh, in the southeast of the, the site there. Um, the site itself, uh, it, it rises gently from the bypass uh, over to its eastern boundary. It's approximately 3.72 hectares. Uh, the site includes two large fields. Uh, the main part of the site, uh, which incorporates the, the proposed outline, uh, is, is the field to, to the east. And it's the larger field. Uh, this field is enclosed on four sides, with the exception of a, a small length of a laneway in the northeast um, corner of the site. Um, the other long field is also enclosed on four sides, with the exception of an agricultural gate that's onto the Straban Bypass. Um, so maybe we're familiar with views of the site from the bypass itself. Um, there's semi mature vegetation along most of the boundary of the bypass and it's largely screened from view. So it's uh, if you just say travel north and you'll, you'll see the existing field gate. Um, images above is uh, photographs, internal photographs uh, showing the, the internal field boundary. The blue arrow is pointing to that it's uh, again same mature hedge which separates the two uh, main fields uh, in the site. Um, the blue arrow here is pointing towards the, the boundary with the residential area of Ardenley Park. Again, there's semi mature vegetation and, and uh, garden fences along most of this boundary. Um, this photograph is showing you a photo uh, an entrance to a laneway leading from Lustafun Park to the northeast corner of the site, um, leaving the original access to the site, you know, the, the, the original agricultural field. Um, it's blocked off at the minute for vehicular access and it's overgrown. And this is an internal photograph uh, showing where that enters the field in the northeast corner. Um, the applicant entered pre application discussion with Council uh, in 2017. The meeting was held in October 2017. Um, the applicant was advised of key points and guidance in a letter dated the 5th of December 2017. Um, this set out the relevant policy requirements. 
uh, and advise that these should be addressed in full to allow prompt consideration of the proposal at application stage. Um, it was, the applicant was advised that the proposal was contrary to the Strabane area plan as land was owned for housing. Um, the FA rose at the time advised that the proposal was on to a protected route that AMP3 applies and the plan will only be granted for development directly onto the protected route in exceptional circumstances or the proposal is of regional significance. Had letter advised that an alternative means of access to the site should be sought. Um, had letter advised that a number of reports would be required if an application was submitted to include a transport assessment, a drainage assessment, a noise impact assessment, construction environment management plan, a flat survey, a habitat survey, and a design and access statement. Had letter advised that if council advice is not followed, the result will almost certainly be that your application will not be progressed quickly and it may be refused. The plan application was submitted uh, in March 2018. The original submission was a company design and access statement and a community consultation report, both of which are required by law at, uh, at the submission stage. And a transport assessment form was also submitted at the submission stage. A preliminary ecological appraisal was submitted in August 2018. This report informed the content and need of reports such as the construction environment management plan, short and descent, habitat survey and bat survey. Drainage assessment was submitted in January 19, the noise impact in June 19, uh, planning case for you protect the route and Strabane area plan zoning in June 19, transport assessment was submitted in September 19, bat survey was submitted in February 2020. Um, the construction environment management plan uh, has still not been received and an updated transport impact assessment is also required. Um, proposed site is um, previously indicated as an outline application. There has been indicative plans submitted along with the outline um, I suppose to give an idea of the, the extent of the proposal. Um, While well, its description sets out you know, the indoor elements and in, in particular the 45,000 square foot indoor arena, um, the indicative plan also shows um, additional out, out, out gives more detail of the proposal and the proposed outdoor element of the, the proposal. Um, there's an outdoor pitch with uh, six spectators, um, spectator areas on all four sides. There's a uh, parking areas um, and uh, an access uh, via second field to the, the bypass. Um, yeah, that just outlines the, the main issues there in detail of the proposal. We, during the uh, application stage, we had um, six letters of support received, five of these from elected representatives, two from MLAs and three from councillors. Further letter from the uh, football governing body, the AFA, Irish Football Association. Uh, in summary, um, the matters raised included a strategically important proposal for Straban and surrounding area. The Straban area plan is old or outdated. Uh, no housing shortage in Straban. Uh, we'll bring most needed recreational and youth facilities to Straban. We'll meet strategic objectives of AFA, improve facility provision in the Straban area. Uh, we'll bring economic health and social benefits to the area. Um, since the report was submitted to the committee, we, we've also received two further letters of support from elected representatives. Uh, and, you know, many of the same as you, one of them you'll have before you in your late items, and one um, they will, just like the same issues are raised, similar issues are raised. Um, in terms of summary of consultees, uh, NA Water, no objection. Uh, DFA Roads, um, the, the proposals contrary to PPS 3 proposals, uh, contrary to protected routes policy, adequate access, parking, and movement has not been demonstrated. Um, the DFA roads have been involved since pad stage. They've consistently said that uh, AMP3 needs to be satisfied. Um, EHD have considered the submitted to noise impact assessment. Um, they have no objections. Locks Agency have no objection. Uh, DERA, NIA, and particularly uh, uh, NED, they believe the proposal is contrary to PPS2 and the Habitats regulations as the applicant has not submitted a SEMP form for assessment. Um, SES, um, Shared Environmental Service, are unable to complete the Habitats regulation assessment as the applicant has not submitted a SEMP for assessment. 
DFA, Rivers have no objection in principle. Um, they have looked for some further details, but we believe that, that could be, if approved, could be uh, dealt with at a free conditional reserve matter stage. Um, in terms of policy assessment, there, there's a number of main issues to consider in this application. Um, the first will is the, the zoning or the Straban area plan. Uh, the land is zoned uh, from the settlement limit of Straban. Um, you'll see the, the zoning there, uh, the blue arrow on the, the image. See if I can here. So the, the main zone in the Straban area flat covered both sides of the, the bypass. So this area would be now known as Castle Grange, and this was the, the Melmount side. The northern section of that has been developed out as, as we know as Arden Lee Park. Uh, so what remains of the site is approximately six hectares. Um, if we refer back to the site location plan, it's mainly the two fields that we've seen is what's left. There was also a portion developed as part of the Holy Cross redevelopment as well, like so a small portion on the south of the site. Um, in terms of the Straban area plan, which the whole map is in there, um, this is the, there's at the time of doing the report, there was approximately 30 hectares of land undeveloped. Um, that's it, you know, there's no housing on, on the land itself, but most of that now is, is commitments through permissions. Uh, you're probably aware of recent permissions at uh, Mount Carmel, etc. You know, through their matters and follow-up applications. So effectively what we have left, this is really the last un uncommitted to zoning uh, from the Straban, Straban town. So uh, the Planning Act, um, Section 6 for the Planning Act, requires the Council to make uh, plan decisions in accordance with the LDP, unless material considerations and the great our ways. Um, so the applicant has made a submission in, uh, in terms of our, our material considerations, and we have considered that in our recommendation. Um, some of the issues raised is that the Strabane area plan is out of date, um, the land is landlocked, uh, the site was only a suitable site in the Straban area for the proposed use. Uh, housing land not taken up um, during the, the plan period uh, and precedent said elsewhere. Um, the report goes into more detail of the various issues raised in that. Um, whilst these are all plan, material plan considerations, they were weighed against the loss of the, the zoned housing land. Um, the recommendation is that the Straban area plan is current statutory plan that the council makes the plan decisions on. Uh, it has not been conclusively demonstrated that the land cannot be accessed for housing. It's not been conclusively demonstrated that this is the only suitable site in the area for the proposed use. Um, we believe that the reasons as to why housing land has not been taken up are speculative uh, and um, and whilst there are examples of zone land being developed, they are minor in our view in comparison to the, the potential loss of, uh, in terms of the size and amount of land uh, in, in this proposal. So as a touch upon, we believe it's the, the last remaining uncommitted zoning. So again, although the site is 3.72 hectares, um, it goes through for a party land, uh, particularly the, the land uh, is raised in the, the Submission belonging to the church. Um, so we believe that uh, if this is developed, you know, the, the, effectively the rest of the land there will be for sterile as well. We will not be, we will be able to develop for housing in terms of going on the uh, protected route. Um, the next main area is, main issue is, uh, I suppose, the protected route policy, and particularly in PKS3. Proposal access is on to the protected route, the A2, A5, sorry, Straban Bypass. Um, we view this as a very important, uh, you know, uh, strategic transport route within our, within, our, within our district. A5 forms part of the Western Key Transport Corridor, which links the area in the northwest of the border. Uh, due to significance, it is protected route status as reflected in the regional planning policy. It is one of only five key transport corridors in Northern Ireland which are the top tier long distance routes connecting cities and main towns to the major regional gateways. Um, these routes can contribute significantly to economic prosperity and it's important that they are protected for this function. Straban Bypass serves a number of functions including relieving congestion, uh, 
in the Strabantown Centre and, and residential areas like the Nelmount Road allows free flow of traffic from um, key settlements such as Gary to Dublin. Um, it is important that a new access on the grid, grid does not compromise the function of facilitating the free and safe movement of traffic and does not significantly add to congestion. The policy tests with an AMP free. Um, there's a presumption against uh, granting plan permission for new accesses unless it's demonstrated that there's exceptional circumstances or where, where the proposal is of regional significance. Um, exceptional circumstances considered as per case put forward to allow the, the development plan. So many of the same issues we've considered are these an exception because the, the same issues would apply in terms of uh, losing the zoned housing land and on balance we, we don't think this is an exception. Um, the regional significance case considered is accepted uh, and I think it's any doubt to anybody here in the room that this is a major proposal for Straban and the surrounding area but it's not been demonstrated that if allowed it will be of regional significance. Um, when we talk about regional significance we're talking about all of Northern Ireland or a, a whole region of the, of the country in the northwest of Ireland. Um, the proposal does, is not specifically to refer to or include in any program for government, regional plans or government body strategies. So there's no uh, strategies or government direction out there saying that this is a, of regional importance, of regional significance. Um, so in our view the proposal is contrary to the AMP free. In addition to that we have to assess PPS free in terms of all our issues including uh, access, parking, servicing uh, of the site. Uh, a transport assessment was uh, submitted but it has not addressed all the relevant requirements. The absence of this means it is not possible to fully assess the impact of the proposal including even a weighted consideration of setting aside the protected risk policy. The proposal is also contrary to AMP2 and AMP, AMP7 the submission does not, has not demonstrated that it can provide a safe and adequate access onto the bypass and stopping to establish that adequate parking and servicing arrangements are in place. Um, I suppose the third uh, main issue with the application relates to PPS2. The site is within 800 metres of the rubber coil Tripperty's uh, Special of Area Conservation SAC, uh, ASSA, which is of international importance and national importance of protective and habitat regulation and environment order 2002. Habitats regulations stipulate that plan permission should not be granted unless the council is satisfied um, that no development is likely to adversely affect the integrity of a European site could be carried out under that permission. So normally what happens in the submission of the application, we will consult NED and SES and they'll advise of any information they need um, to make an assessment under those regulations and they'll carry out what's called uh, an appropriate assessment under the, the HRA regs uh, and this must be done before a final decision is made. So NIA requested from past days that an outline construction environment management plan would be required to make a proper assessment of the potential effect of the integrity of the rubber foil SAC SSA. Um, this was reiterated in the response to the application in October 18. Um, October 18 of the response of AIDS Council that there was insufficient information for planning authority as also as the competent authority to undertake a robust habitats regulation assessment and for NAEA to undertake an assessment on any additional ASSI, ASSI features um, that, that information is still outstanding. Um, therefore there has been no HRA habitats regulation assessment completed for the proposal. Um, we have taken a precautionary approach to set out the commission guidance uh, in regard to manager Nitra Natura 2000 sites and is required by the European Court of Justice uh, and the case law set out above. Uh, and uh, we believe the proposal is contrary to PPS2 policies NH1 and 3, PS, PPS, and the habitat regulation, in that the development would have not been likely to have a significant effect on the designated site. Um, PPS8 is uh, the relevant policy for sport and recreation. Uh, and there's a number of policies are relevant uh, to this uh, proposal. I believe that the proposal uh, is an intensive sports facility, so OS4 um, is applicable. OS4 says that there's five criteria that must be met in all cases. Um, 
these are uh, these relate to amenity. You know what impact this will have on surrounding amenity of the area, uh, impact on the actual historic environment, uh, the high standard of buildings, the expectation of a high standard of buildings, uh, a demonstration of needs of disabled different, uh, and a demonstration of the different modes of transport, so pedestrian, cycling. You know, has it been demonstrated that that's been considered? Uh, and uh, it's been demonstrated that road network can handle extra traffic and adequate parking, etc., has been provided. Um, so, we've went through each of the criteria in the report. Um, there's no significant issues with immunity, um, as the proposal is it's submitted at the minute. Most of the traffic and footfall appear to be going towards away from the residential areas uh, and along the indicative plan, the parking seems to be. Uh, between that and the main uh, vault forms. We don't think there's any significant issues with amenity on the face of it. The design of buildings is not dealt with at the outline stage, and that's something that we consider the preserved matter stage. So there, there's no issue with that criteria in OS4. Um, I suppose, really, the, the other criteria um, in terms of ne negative impact on the natural environment. Um, at this point, because we don't have all the information we need, including the construction environment management plan, we can't say that that criteria has been met. And likewise, as the TA, um, as, as there's still work to be on the transport assessment, we can't uh, stand over the other two points uh, within OS4 as well. So, as it stands, the proposal is, is contrary to OS4, as all five criteria are, are, are not met. Um, and the other relevant policy within PKS8 is OS7. Um, this deals with floodlighting of sports and outdoor recreational areas. It says it will only permit development of floodlighting associated with sports where all the following criteria are met. There is no unacceptable impact on amenities driven nearby. There is no adverse impact on the visual amenity of character of the locality. Public safety is not prejudiced. Um, at this outline stage, um, the applicant has satisfied um, environmental health and has submitted a BAT survey and, submit, and satisfied NED. Uh, so we, we don't see that there's any issues in terms of meeting OS 7 uh, and that uh, element of the policy has been satisfied. Um, um, PPS 15, which the our relevant consideration, is relates to the planning and flood risk. Um, a training assessment has been submitted. Um, although that there may be some minor additional information that hasn't been included, um, we, we feel that this can be dealt with precondition at the air matter stage. So in the round, we believe it satisfies PPS 15. Um, so as a conclusion, as I said, it's an outline application at the stage that we're at, uh, and then with the information we have before us, our recommendation is to refuse. We believe the proposal is contrary to the Strabane area plan, um, PPS 3, AMP 2, 3 and 7, um, PPS 2, uh, SPPS and the Habitats regulations, and PPS 8, OS 4. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie. Um, members, I just want the um, by way of explaining the very strange comment that I made at the start of before this application was presented that all options were available to us. Um, I'm sure I'm not the only one who, um, when I read the report and as Malky um, outlined, that there is um, specifically uh, legal implications around the, the HRA. Um, I've sought advice and I've been told that if, if the members of the committee were minded they approve the application, then those um, the, those reports could be sought prior to the decision being issued. Um, so I, that as a way of explaining the very weird or strange comment that I made at the start around all, all uh, options being available to this. Um, can I invite um, Daniel McCrossan, MLA, to address the committee? Very welcome, Daniel. Um, you have five minutes. 
Jessica Kamali. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. I welcome the opportunity to come here today to speak on this very important application. And I thank the planning team uh, and the committee for the opportunity to do so. Uh, five minutes is a very short period to articulate my strong support uh, of this project and the importance of it to uh, this uh, region uh, and uh, in particular to Straban specifically. Can I start by saying this proposal has been in development for a number of years and I want to thank uh, particularly Seamus McElroy for his uh, great leadership in relation to uh, this uh, important project for the wider Straban area. Can I also note at the outset that there is a huge amount of support for this project. Uh, the uh, community is united in their support for it and the great opportunities that it would present for sporting organizations for health and well-being of the wider uh, Straban community, this city and indeed the region as well. Uh, there has been no objections to the 86 letters that have been sent out to the various uh, properties, uh, neighbouring properties directly uh, associated or supposed in the surrounding area of this, which is a very strong uh, 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 recommendation in my view of the local community to, in supporting this project. Uh, there's a number of points that I want to raise and uh, Maliki has kindly articulated some concerns in relation to uh, the planners, but the A5 is an example. This, this issue seems to have come up in terms of a protected route. Uh, yes, at present it is, a connected, it is a protected route, but we have to be mindful that the A5 upgrade, the A5 Western Transport Corridor, is an executive commitment that is going to be delivered, and it will be of huge benefit to this entire uh, region, and in particular to this city and to the wider district as well. When that happens, that road, uh, the Great Northern Link, uh, as it's known, uh, will be downgraded. And I think that's an important point. We are a council that are forward-looking and strategic in our outlook for this entire area. And I think we need to be mindful that uh, ahead of us is the upgrade of the A5. And there are strong commitments uh, indicated from the Assembly that that will be happening in due course when all things are satisfied. I think it's also important to note at this stage that there are precedents here uh, in terms of access to this particular protect, prote uh, protected route. Uh, and one is in relation to Castle Grange, a very large and significant housing development just down the road from where this is going to be situated, where there's an excess of about 300 houses. Uh, and if you note, there's about two cars to every house these days. So there's significant flow of traffic into and from uh, that particular protected route. Also, more recent times, the Oma Cinema has also been granted access uh, onto the route as well, or from the route, uh, just in uh, more recent years. So there's clear precedent here that has been set that would enable access. I think it's important that I outline as well uh, the uh, strong uh, support from all, uh, all parties and also from the wider community in relation to the importance of this project. Even local parish priest businesses and others have come together uh, to support the project very, very strongly. Father Michael Doherty has also made a submission uh, that has clearly indicated that the long strip of land that was outlined on the map uh, is owned by the parish and under no other circumstances will he grant access to or through those lands unless it's for community development. I think that's a key point. And it also adds to the clear concern we have that this land, which is very clear to be seen given that we're now in 2020, uh, is landlocked. There is no other access and there's no prospect whatsoever of a housing development on that land. Uh, and I can't labour uh, that point enough. I also want to add that the area plan, which was created 30 years ago, I was one, uh, it was out of date 20 years ago, I was, t uh, I was 11, uh, shows very clearly uh, that this plan is out of date. And I know there's great amounts of work going on in this council to upgrade that, upgrade that and uh, I look forward to seeing how that develops. But I think we need to be uh, realistic here. This is not going to be developed for housing land. Uh, I have clearly stressed uh, that and added various submissions to planners uh, in relation to my concerns about uh, the continued uh, uh, argument that has been made from the planners that, that this is for housing. It will never be for housing. There hasn't been to date and there won't be going forward. Uh, I think also uh, to add in uh, my concerns around uh, the uh, continued argument uh, that, that, that has been articulated uh, in relation to uh, the protected route which I've touched on. I, I can't stress enough, this road, it's, it, yes, it's the bypass through Straban, but I and others are championing very hard for the A5 and it will be delivered. I think it's important that we recognize as a council and as, and as, and as a wider region uh, the importance of these facilities. This has been a community-led, club-led uh, project. There has been £50,000 spent on the application. 
to date. And I think that in relation to the environmental assessment or the report that has been requested, it hasn't yet been received. There's clear reason for that. That will be provided if, in principle, uh, planning is granted today. It is unfair uh, uh, and also very, very difficult for a club to raise uh, continued money or waste continued money if this is going to be refused, which I sincerely hope it will not be. Uh, I think that uh, it's important that it is recognised in the wider Straban area there's a huge shortage of sporting amenities. And there's been huge work done by this council and it's very, very greatly recognised for the wider uh, Straban and Derry people that that is the case. But this club are leading from the front. The community are supporting them and are supporting them uh, very, very strongly in ensuring that this is delivered. It's not just about one sporting organisation, it's about a multiple sporting organisations, it's about the health and well-being of our general community. Uh, and it's also about sending out a message from this council that when community and when sports, sporting organisations want to lead from the front, that we will support them in doing so. This will not be perfect, but they're working very hard to see its delivery, and I know that uh, uh, it will uh, be a great uh, addition to uh, the wider council area, but absolutely to the region. I have asked on continued occasions, this phrase of regional significance keeps coming up, and I have yet to receive what the uh, planners in council would define to be regionally significant. It cannot be explained to me what that is. So the criteria or the bar of the criteria is set so high that no one can satisfy it. That is not appropriate, and it's not helpful, in my opinion, to people that are trying their best to develop and to continue uh, in investing in this area. Uh, and I think it's unfair that this phrase is continually thrown out without anyone actually defining what that is. This is an exceptional uh, investment. This is an exceptional opportunity. This is something that will add to uh, and improve the quality of life of people that we represent in this wider area. And I strongly and absolutely support the application. Uh, and I think that it would be hugely beneficial to the entire region for sporting organizations and clubs who have been prevented from advancing uh, over previous years because there's been a lack of facilities. So I thank you for listening to today, and I thank you as well for your time. There's clear arguments that can be made to support this, and obviously anything that's outstanding uh, will be satisfied before full planning uh, is obviously offered. So thank you very much, members, for your time, and thank you, Chair, as well. Thank you, Mr. McCausen. And um, I, I note that you've asked a question within your, your presentation. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a facility within this committee. The, um, allow speakers to ask questions directly to officers, but I have no doubt that members of the committee will relay that question to the, op the development officer. Um, I know there's an opportunity now for members to ask yourself questions, and I know there's a question from Councillor Dobbins. Thank you, Chair. I, don't, I wasn't aware I needed a question, but <laughs> um, her, thanks very much, Dan, for, for doing that. It would be a clear difference in Stan and Stormont shouting and Stan and Dairy City Council <laughs> doing the same. But, um, look, where it sits with me is coming from a sporting background and very heavy sporting background. I totally agree where this is coming from. And um, But reading my notes last night, um, once again, I, I have to say, to me, this was sort of presented from our officers as a half-baked outline plan application because there was so much missing from it. Um, and I am really glad that you summed up and you may expressed why it did seem to be half-baked, as in the monies aren't there, why should uh, a community be spending monies, you know, when things, it may not go their way um, until the outline planning is permitted and then all monies then going. I would like, Dan, assurances that this is here uh, and that there is ring fenced. And I'm a bit disappointed that the parish council and Father Michael didn't um, put it in writing as well, you know, because that that protected that or that um, thoroughfare, you know, that is their land, you know, it sh they should have, as they said, well, we're willing to do it for a sporting um, facility, but not not um, not there for 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 any sort of housing. Um, that's all. That is all I have to say. Um, as I say. It does, reading them between the lines, and I'm really glad that you did say that at the end. You know, I do understand being from a sporting family myself. 
that uh, the money's not there and you're afraid to spend it in case things go up against you. But um, thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Um, Doug, I don't believe that there was a question within that. And if that, okay. it might be more appropriate for the applicant to ask, to answer any questions than, um, than an elected representative yet. So, yeah. But can you, can you direct the question to the applicant rather than direct it to Mr. McCrossin? Sorry, Chair. I opened my speak with, um, I wasn't aware that there was a question, but I would like to hear it. Well, I, I've, I've got, um, from because it was myself that highlighted the question within it, and uh, maybe it was um, Mr. McCrossan was making a point that was, I picked up the question as what would be deemed as regionally significant. Um, so that question could be put to the officer at the appropriate time. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. McCr or Daniel. Um, thank you, Mr. McCrossan. And can I invite um, Councillor Raymond Barr to address the committee? You're very welcome, Raymond. Um, you have five minutes to address the committee. Uh, thank you, Chair. <coughs> well, as Daniel's alluded to, just a swap. I was going to say that uh, this is a very good group. But uh, I'd just like to say to the first side that uh, uh, I'm an ex member of the Brown Kelly Football Club, uh, not, not as a player. Um, as a representative of Spermar, I feel this project is a once in a lifetime opportunity to develop a state of art facility that will push the band. And the entire uh, council district on the um, map. Councillor Barr, uh, there's members that are struggling to hear you. And can you speak a bit closer to Mike? I'll start over again. Just um, as a representative for Sparingward, I feel this project is a once in a lifetime opportunity to develop a state of the art facility that will put Straban on the entire council district firmly on the sporting map, comprised of a full size indoor 3G arena of such that does not exist on the island of Ireland, a well-being centre, purpose built youth centre, which we currently don't have in the town, a fitness suite, office accommodation, exhibition and events space. The health benefits of the development are obvious, increased participation in physical activity, adding support in tackling the level of obesity. I'm a board member myself of the Quorum Centre in Stavon, which provides professional counselling psychotherapy and psychosocial support in Stravan and the surrounding area. The Quorum Centre will be keen to work alongside the club in tackling the ever growing issues of mental health and suicide in the district. The Quorum Centre is at present operating on premises which are too small to meet demand. This development could be utilised to help address this problem. All our benefits include local schools access to modern facilities during school hours including Nagaboo Special Care School, which runs alongside the proposed site. An outdoor stadium capable of hosting Irish League games, giving our young people an opportunity to play football at the highest level without having to travel to other towns. The facility would have the ability, because of its uniqueness, to attract clubs the length and breadth of the island and the need from Cross Channel for pre-season training. Surely this makes it a, a project of uh, national significance, let alone regional significance. The economic benefits for local hospitality and commerce should not be understood. The club are to be commended for bringing this ambitious project, which have, would have been unthinkable in the district 10 years ago, and they have shown serious commitment by raising and spending in excess of £50,000 to get this project to the stage that it's at. Local construction companies would benefit from the build when, and when completed would have the potential to create 20 plus full and part-time jobs. 
the Sudan public have really bought onto this project, which is illustrated by their continuous uh, financial support that they built. The project will be totally cross-community. I would ask the committee to grant an acceptance in principle by granting an deferral to allow the club to proceed with procuring the additional reports at a cost of £18,000. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bauer. Um, can I invite Councillor Michaela Boyle um, to address the committee? Very welcome, Michaela. Um, you have five minutes. Thank you, Chair. Um, sorry, it took me time coming down there. I'm going to have to do something about them stairs. Um, Chair, I want to thank, like others, the members, um, yourself, Chair, and members and principal planning officers of this council for allowing me the opportunity to come to before you today to speak in support of Straban Athletic Outline Planning Application. A significant amount of detailed information has been collated and provided by the applicant to date uh, to members and to officers. Uh, the application has, as has been said, in the planning process for some time, and the applicant is keen uh, to see the proposed facility move forward. It has huge potential for the whole area, for the whole of the community, the district, and the wider northwest uh, border region. When completed, the project, it will be a centre of excellence for multi-sport usage, health and well-being, indoor and outdoor, and the first indoor 3G area arena of its kind anywhere on these islands. This application has local and full cross-community support, as been demonstrated and mentioned by other speakers. This club has brought this application to where it is now, through self-funding efforts at considerable expense to date, and the applicant believes it's money well spent. They have been compliant of requests to date from planners, and that itself shows commitment to deliver a project of major significance for social, economic, sporting benefits to the people of Straban and the wider district. As a member of this council and as a council, we need to be fully supporting and facilitating in every way possible their efforts to deliver this major exceptional project. Chair, I fully understand that the planning process is applicable to every application. In addition, looking at reasons in any application that comes before members to recommend a refusal, I understand that you, Chair, and members will always seek ways within the process to support and assist the applicant. That is the purpose of having a planning committee. And within that purpose, the Planning Act 2011 2.2 contained within it seeks to create places where communities flourish and enjoy a shared, a shared sense of belonging, both now and into the future, is fundamentally what planning is about in order to make change on the ground. Planning authorities should and they do prioritize timely and predictable decision making to support positive place making and effective stewardship that contributes to shaping high quality, sustainable places to live, invest, work and spend leisure time. A key dimension for sustainable development for us here in this district is unlocking potential development and that is the, the request here today, Chair. Chair and members, we are all aware of the effects that COVID has had on our communities and particularly with our young people with their mental health and well-being. They are our future and we want to invest in them. We want to be able to provide and support all of our homegrown talent, full of sportsmen and women and young people, by delivering for them in every aspect of sports so that they have the opportunity to excel 
and this propo proposed facility will do just that. In terms of access onto a protected route, uh, I say when and I stress when the A5 comes into play, this road no longer will have protected status. No other site, as was demonstrated, uh, was available locally for the project of this magnitude. And the inability in the past to deliver social housing on this site, that ship has sailed. The owner of the site, which is Father Doherty, which belongs to the Derry Day Austin Parish, has said in a letter in the reports that you have in front of you today, members, Father Doherty said that the land was once zoned for potential housing development within the area. When it's adopted the, the, the cur under the current plan, which is outdated and that the site is landlocked, that this, this development is for community and recreational use only. And that is in your packs today, a letter from the parish priest, Father Michael Doherty. As I said, the land was once zoned for potential housing development within the area plan, which is adopted, which is the adopted plan currently. However, it is indeed an outdated area plan, which is nearly as old as I am. A new local development plan, I believe, has now been developed, one which will hopefully replace the outdated one and will potentially address the housing need. In fact, this council recently passed an application for over 160 houses, social housing, in the old Adria site, a site that was previously not intended for social housing. So that is an example because there was no other land suitable within the area. I do not want to, I do not need to inform already informed members um, of this council of projects of regional significance. However, this project can and will potentially uh, affect the, equal, the quality of life for people in the community that it will serve in a regionally significant way. This project does more than tick boxes for regional significance. When you look at the many benefits for the educational welfare, the public health and economic development for all of the citizens in the Northwest region. Chair, just if you'll allow me to, to sum up here on social equity, this project will give the people of Straban and the wider Northwest region the same benefits as others have in other parts of these islands, offering the same equal opportunities in a centre of excellence that does not currently exist in this area or anywhere else. If the Council is of the view that the principle is accepted and that the applicant can demonstrate that he can provide further information that is required prior to a formal decision being made or dealt with by means of conditions, I would hope that is the outcome today, Chair. So I want to thank you, Chair, and members and officers for your indulgence uh, with me on this application this afternoon. For me to my end, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Boy. Um, can I invite um, Joanne Muldoon, the agent, and Seamus McElroy, the applicant, to address the committee? You're very welcome, um, and thank you for your patience. Um, you have 10 minutes to address the committee. Good afternoon, Chair, members of Council, members of Planning Service, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Johan Muldoon. I am an architect, director of Manor Architects, and have been involved with this project for more than three and a half years. Today I come before you to ask you to over overturn the opinion of Planning Service. There are two core planning issues which are the basis of the refusal. The first one is, A, the lands are currently zoned for housing in the Straban Area Plan 2001, thus the proposed use is contrary. B, the proposed access into the development is from a protected route. The six reasons for refusal that are listed can be overcome if we can agree the principle of this development on this site. Therefore, today we gratefully request that you, as the overall decision makers, grant an acceptance in principle of the proposal with the deferral to allow us to complete the specific additional reports at a cost of 18,000 
which the applicant's charitable organization has already sitting in their account and ring fenced for this purpose. But simply over the period of two years, when they continually ask for acceptance in principle, um, giving assurance that these reports would com be completed, we were never given that assurance in principle. We feel that this approach is appropriate in this circumstance and would add the following. This is an outline application. The whole purpose of an outline application is to determine the principle of development with many or most of the details reserved for later approval. Despite this, a significant amount of detailed information has been commissioned by the applicant over the past two years at a cost of 50000 The planning report refers in several places to additional information still being required, particularly in relation to natural heritage. This is in direct contradiction to a letter dated uh, late June 2020 confirming that the planning team is not currently awaiting any further information from our office in order to conclude the case. There were 86 neighbours notified about the application and not one single objection received, only letters of support which have been overwhelming. The Sturban area plan is the adopted plan at the moment, but it is grossly misleading to say that it is not out of date. Next year it will be 30 years old and almost 20 years beyond its notional end date of 2001. We provided detailed information in this regard, the most significant of which were that the lands are landlocked, having completed detailed research and analysis into the laneway that runs in parallel to the site, and we noted that the only means of access were across parish lands. The parish priests has provided a letter noting that they will only grant permission to a charity, not a developer, to create a new access road, which is on file and goes some way to alleviate some of the concerns. In the meantime, the applicant is being penalised by having this application assessed against an area plan which has exceeded its notional end date by more than 19 years. Moving on to the issue of the protected route, PPS 3 states the planning permission will be granted for a new access or intensification of an existing access to a protected route in exceptional circumstances or that is regionally significant. The SPPS provides some guidance on the matter. In 5.43 of the SPPS, we note the development hierarchy of regional significance, major development, and local development. This is a major application, but with significant benefits to the region and to the local area. In paragraph, sorry, in paragraph 12.14 of the case officer's report, it is accepted that the proposed site is the only suitable site in the locality. Surely this alone constitutes exceptional circumstance. However, in paragraph 12.22 of the case officer's report, they dismiss the examples which we provided as being exceptional, namely the scale of the sites available, the availability of other sites, the accessibility of other sites, um, and they have actually stated that there are no overarching planning policy reasons presented in respect of the suitability of this site. But we have submitted an entire brochure which, to demonstrate, which helps to demonstrate this matter. Therefore, we would ask uh, from the committee that perhaps the question could be raised as what do planning consider to be exceptional circumstances. At this point, we would also refer to policy OS4 of PPS 8, which states that the department will only permit development of intensive sporting facilities where they are located within settlements. This is the only suitable site within this area on which this can be located. The planning report, however, refers in, plan, in paragraph 12.24 to the criteria set out in the SPPS as to what is regionally significant. This is a completely flawed argument in this particular instance. The determination in accordance with PPS 3 as to whether there are exceptional circumstances or the regional significance of the proposal is a policy test requiring a planning judgment on the part of Council weighing up all material considerations. It is contended that persuasive arguments have been made to the effect that exceptional circumstances apply here and that the scheme is of regional significance in which case the proposed access from the bypass can be allowed. It is also crucial to note that with the, pro the progress of the, the new roadway through Sirban, this argument becomes defunct and the classification of the route is no longer protected. If the Council is of the view that the principle is accepted for this development as an outline application, then further information can be submitted prior to a formal decision being made or dealt with by means of conditions. In ending, I would reiterate that we seek, we seek acceptance in principle of the proposed use with the deferral to complete the specific additional reports at a cost of 18000 I would also say that the basis of this refusal 
is in a 30-year-old area plan that the access to a protected route, this could soon lose its classification and status, that this is a major application with significant benefits to the region, with major socio-economic benefits, and an opportunity for this council to set itself aside once again as a sporting elite area. We very much appreciate your time, and I very much welcome any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Um, is there any questions, members? The Joanne or um, Mr. Uh, Michael Ray? Apologies, Councillor Boyle. Uh, no, for, for Joanne. Joanne, thanks for coming. And can I also say to uh, Daniel Raymond and Michaela, thank you also for your representations here today and having the patience actually to stick with us through the previous application, but it's not uncommon. Um, that that happens to people, um, but I'm always appreciative, as I'm sure everybody is, that the, the people uh, stick it out here. And as you can see from that previous application, I know they're not relevant here, but there's an awful lot of discussion about the age of uh, local development plans, and I'm sure we're all very conscious of that. Uh, not only am I myself, but um, others, and clearly officers will be too, and I'm very anxious that we we don't have a, a, a constant circular conversation about the age of the plans because personally you know Joanne we're stuck with we're, we have we're stuck with them in a sense uh, for want of a put it. But um just a number, just a couple of questions for you. Um I, I I'm I'm curious about because I, whilst I know where the land is and I can picture it off to me, I think it's to my right as I'm going along the bypass. Uh depending on which direction you're going in, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, um uh the the land obviously is, is zoned for for housing. What I think, as my understanding is, the church owns some of it, or they own all of it. There's a strip. Uh, sorry, thank you very much, John, for the question. There's a strip of land to the front along the bypass at the moment, which essentially landlocks, and it's quite quite clear here. It landlocks the site for our proposal. There's no alternate means of access to this site which is why it has never been developed for housing through, let's say, the boom period. So the site as it sits at the moment is landlocked because that sliver right along the edge of the bypass is owned by the parish. The parish have given a letter and allowed the uh, Strabane Athletic access across the land for the purposes of their charitable enterprise. So other than this development and connection through the parish lands, this land can never be constructed upon. I would also add just to... to um, maybe assist with people's orientation, is that the site is also bounded on two sides with schools, which make it the absolute perfect location uh, for uh, a development of this nature. And when we were looking at, um, in terms of the exceptional circumstances and the suitability of this site, we assessed every site that was zoned for recreational use in the Strabane area. None of them are suitable for various reasons to do with topography, accessibility, or anything else. This was the only site that was um, suitable, particularly because of, of its ability to connect. That's okay. Um, just one more, <coughs> Joanne. Um, so clearly, uh, the officer report outlines that this, is, this, is, this has been designated for, for housing, um, whether that be, be social housing or indeed private housing. Um, and how many homes could one reasonably expect to be able to build on this kind of land? I think in this site, I think the thing that we would say is, is that you could never build houses on this land without a means of access to it. And currently, and the reason that developers haven't looked at this during that entire period was because it could never be built there because of that. So the access, if you were to submit a planning application, John, there is no means of suitable access to this site. And that has been exhausted through discussions with the parish and also through an analysis by our road consultant of the little tiny laneway that accessed these lands for purely agricultural uses. So to talk about numbers isn't really relevant because the numbers only come into play because the access determines the numbers and without the access there are no numbers. Um, thank you, Joanne. Councillor Dobbins. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Joanne, for that. Um, could you just reiterate one wee bit for me? Sure. It's with regard to, um, you, you had said the regionally, regionally significance. Mm -hmm. 
and you had said a few lines then to explain your take on regional significance. Could you just sure. reiterate it? The discussion around the regional significance, um, when the um, policies were initially written, that was when all the decisions were made by the planning department. Now the decisions are made by the likes of yourself. And so in the SPPS regarding regional significance, what it, what it states is that if a project is deemed to be regionally significant, it can be determined by and must be determined by the minister. But when we look at the hierarchies, and in the SPPS it states the development hierarchy, a hierarchy of development for all planning applications includes regionally significant development, major development, and local development. Then it goes on to say in 5.44, regionally significant developments form the top tier of development pro proposals, such as Casement Park. This is obviously not Casement Park. But that does not detract from the fact that it is significant to this region. And so therefore what we contend is, is that the term regionally significant or significant to the region can be really confusing here. Um, what, we also, what it goes on to say then is these developments have a critical contribution to make to the economy and social success. We're not in disagreement with this. But what we also say is, is that with a major application such as this in this area, major developments have important social economic and environmental implications for our council area. They have the potential to deliver important um, benefits for the community and these applications should be given the appropriate priority to avoid undue delay and risk to investment for any decisions. And so that is where we, we go back to what we were saying about it being a point of planning judgment. And that is where we have struggled with this application all along. What we sought was that, if I, if I can refer you, councillor, to some of the submissions that we made. We presented and prepared a BAT survey and an acoustic re report. What we said to the case officer at that time, we're now on our fourth case officer, I think, what we referred to the case officer at that time was the preparation of a BAT survey only lasts for one year. And so therefore, that is a cost to a charitable organization. We asked that the, the decision and the call of judgment could be made on the principle of this development on this site so that it would give assurance to this charitable organization before they would go and spend money that is essentially wasted because that report and an acoustic report will have to be redone. Yet we did those reports to try and push the application ahead, but we are still where we're at now. The additional reports that have been noted, and in your information pack, you will see that we have prepared a table where we have liaised with our consultant on all the outstanding information that is there. We, do, we are not saying that there isn't additional information. What we are saying is, is that it would be irresponsible of Seamus and the team to spend more money from a charitable organization on reports if the principle cannot be established at outline stage, which is what this is for. That is what the purpose of this is for. They will still now have to go back and redo their BAT survey and their acoustic report because we don't know the specifics of the development, which will also be um, impacted upon by the potential funding which the, the charity can can benefit from in terms of the scale of the development. So I'm not sure if I answered all your questions, but the point is is that this this there are two issues here. The two core issues are are there exceptional circumstances and is this an exceptional development? Yes it is. So at what point or what would it take for planning service to accept that it was exceptional? that these are exceptional circumstances in an exceptional situation on an exceptional site which is landlocked and therefore the, the issue of regional significance doesn't really need to come into play because there's no question about the benefit for the region. Thank you. Members, Councillor Gallagher. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just a couple of questions maybe, maybe for the answer or Seamus maybe. maybe. <laughs> And I've heard already today that there was 50,000 spent and I uh, potentially spent another 18 that, that could help uh, alleviate some of the concerns that have been raised. Uh, to see if uh, all that investment took place and, and those concerns were alleviated and this went to uh, the full development, when would you envisage the project starting? We can ask the question for Seamus because where, where we are now. I'm talking about like a time, yes. rough time frame. Yes, well, 
And so yeah, PCMS, um, PCMS is available if, if PCMS wishes to answer the question. Um, so that question could be directed towards PCMS. Could, right. could, I, could uh, I just uh, ask, uh, answer one point of explanation? Sorry, I've just just in one core thing to that is is that the I, I hope that the, that the the point that I would make there, councillor, is is that it will be potentially two to three years minimum before we would break ground, which is the same time that the delivery of the new road is set, which is 2023 to 2024. So therefore, at that point, to the stage where we get to actually be delivering the project, that route would be declassified, which makes this whole debate defunct. Okay. That's one an, uh, that's one an answered. Um, just uh, and we see the Irish Football Association is supporting this project. That's correct. And uh, and it is said in the report that um, that it, this project would meet some of their key strategic objectives. Yes. As I think I remember trying to put as a governing body, mm -hmm. you know. What is the regional significance of that? Well, it means that where, they are where their classification is with that is, is that they are deeming it to be something that which is strategically important for Northern Ireland. Um, in my mind, and Seamus would be able to clarify, but because of the youth that, that Seamus and the, the charity are, are developing and the talent that they're developing, as well as all the other multi-youth sports that this has the potential to develop in terms of the talent of our youth, that it is very significant to Northern Ireland, not only to, to the region. So that's, that okay. answers that, hopefully, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you, members. Is there, is there any um, further questions for Joanne or for Seamus? Um, Councillor Gallagher? Yeah. Just uh, on my head, uh, and some of the report, and we've heard the outline of what is proposed. Do you know of any other project similar to this that's in Ireland? No, okay. nothing like this exists. Any further questions, Councillor Kelly? Thanks, Chair. Uh, I wonder, could you just maybe revisit the issue of regional significance? Because I didn't pick up. Obviously, it's not on the gift of council to determine regional significance. Uh, it's up to the applicant to petition uh, the minister and to get a, a determination uh, from DFI on that. So uh, I wasn't clear how you ended up uh, saying uh, that it was kind of almost a moot point that it was significant regionally but not regionally significant. And what, what I was saying there, councillor, was is that the, the issue there for us, and I presume as well for planning service, is, is that when that was first brought into play, that was back in 2006, whenever the department determined the decisions and, de and determined that themselves. Um, but that was also determined by the minister. So, sorry, what's that, sorry? The Planning Act 2011. Two, 2011. Well, the, the point about this is, is that when we were going through the process with planning service about the reach, there were two core issues that would allow this development to occur. One was exceptional circumstances or regional significance. When we went through those discussions, what we didn't want to do and what we were never advised to do was to take this project to a ministerial level, to DFI, to determine it. And so therefore, the discussion that we're having is we're not disputing the fact with planning service that in terms of the regional significance, it is not applicable to the top end projects of regional significance that would mean that it would have to go to the minister for determination. What we're saying is, is that there are other criteria within the SPPS that would still allow a judgment call on the significance of this to the region. Rather than it being the term regionally significant, is it significant to the region? Is it strategically significant? Yes, it is all of those things. And I think that that has always been the stumbling block here, but we want to be very clear in that this application, as a major application, having gone through a PAD process, did not need to go to DFI um, in Belfast for determination. That, that can be done here and now by the committee members because it is a major application but it has the benefit of having significant, significant socioeconomic benefits for this location. It's, it's just uh, thanks for the clarification, by the way. Well, actually, I, hope it, I hope it clarifies. I, I think it actually aids the club not to have a regionally significant Correct. Yes. Um, application because the implications on transport and on parking would be too uh, too big on them and they wouldn't be able to, to manage it on that site. So mm -hmm. the, 
Uh, that makes uh, sense. Thank you. Anything further for Joanne or for Seamus? No? Thank you. Um, now, before I go on to questions, the officer, um, there's, we've got two representatives from DFA Roads um, in the gallery. I'm going to take this as an opportunity to um, invite them for questions. So, is there any questions specifically for DFA Roads on this application? And we've got Johnny Ralston and Darren Campbell from DFA. Hansel Gallagher. Thank you. Just, uh, like what's highlighted on, on the report, uh, objectives was around the protected route. Uh, and you see, if all the other stuff was met. And if, if this was talking about the re regional significance, then would, would road service drop their objection to, uh, to the protected route alongside some of that stuff that we've talked about when this is happening, the development of the, the A5, I uh, would, would see this uh, classed as, 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 on a different level. Mm -hmm. um, thanks for the question. Um, my name is Darren Campbell from DFA Roads. Um, I suppose to start off in terms of the A5 Western Transport Corridor Scheme, so there has been a public inquiry has just been held. Um, the outcome of that is we don't know. Um, and, you know, so we don't know for definite that the scheme is going to start. It's depending a favourable outcome from that public inquiry. Um, the A5 Key Transport Corridor, you know, and the Saban Bypass form part of each other. Um, we have always, from the start, you know, raised the issue of, you know, the SPPS and the AMP3, PPS3, and you know have asked the plan authority to advise us. You know, is do they consider this to be an exception or a raising significance? You know, so so that was a, a planning consideration. You know, not really a road safety or transportation. Um, pending the outcome of that, you know, takes our decision as to where it fits um, in terms of planning policy. Um, so because it's a bypass, you know, it is afforded that additional. You know, I suppose protection as such that um, the project would need to, be, you know, meet those tests of being really significant or an exceptional circumstance. So that's where that's where we're at. So we, you know, have been advised that it's not cons that it's considered to be contrary to you know to AMP3. So in that respect, you know, we have offered refusal reasons um, that the access would have an impact because you know because it's not considered to be of that significance. Um, we do have concerns about. Having an access onto a bypass, you know, a protected route, you know, a, a key transport corridor, um, but I suppose the decision is dependent on um, the region significance or the or the, the exceptional um, justification. Go ahead, Kaiser again. And tell me, the, the, they they may disappear if, if if that decision was made, but tell me this: how much bearing does that protected route have? Have or, or this would have if it was opened, would that have com when you compare? You know, the, we have an opening on Orchard Road, we have an opening on Strands Road, we have an opening on Castle Grange, we have an opening on Dorney Road. All those openings already exist, and would this further opening make any significant bearing to those already? Four openings on that, just on that small stretch of it. Of it. Yeah, well, I suppose the accessing onto a, onto a bypass, you know, and allowing free flow of traffic, you know, it's the Western Transport Corridor, it seems a key economic corridor between you know Derry and Loch and um, it's, it's very important that that, that is preserved, um, you know, and as a bypass, that's what we have built it for. Um, so the accesses onto it would have been determined. You know, as part of the scheme design back then, and indeed um, the area plan made provision, the the strengthening of the protected routes policy has happened over time, um, and you know has been strengthened in the SPPS you know, and in PPS3 to to really make sure that if we're letting access on, it is for a very very 
you know, you know, raise a significant issue or an exception for some reason, that is a planning policy matter. Um, you know, we would have concern about an access going on to the bypass. You know, do take the point about the A5 Western Transport Corridor scheme, but until it's there, you know, the declassification or indeed that process, you know, it, it's hard to discuss it. Um, we don't know what what that would be. It certainly wouldn't form part of the A5. But what our thought process would be, you know, we couldn't determine that just at this stage. Thank you, Don. Um, Councillor Davins. Sorry, Chair. My question was just asked. Any further questions for DFA Roads? No. Councillor Boyle. It's, about, it's, it's in relation to the access, but it's probably more in relation to the current access, as, as mentioned by Councillor Gallagher, there's four that he mentioned there. Were any of those created as new access routes onto the, onto the bypass? In other words, was the bypass already built and then new access routes were then agreed upon by DFI roads so, uh, and then subsequently opened up? Yeah, so the area plan protected um, the 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 Strabann bypass and made provision for you know what could be allowed as part of that. Um, um, at that time, that you know my belief is that the planning policy, you know, around protected routes, you know, wasn't as I suppose as strong as it is now, and it probably wasn't the protected routes was a material consideration in allowing the likes of Castle Grange access, but it wouldn't have been had it you know it would have come up against the same issue. Here, had it been you know, the issue of regional significance um, or you know, exception, so that would have been designed on the basis of what existing roads were there, what they would have to take account of, you know, and also what was allowed for in the in the area plan and what was protected in the area plan at that time. Mr. Kelly, thanks, Chair. I wonder, in terms of your deliberations, have you given any consideration to the type of access and egress onto uh, and off the site? Is there a, a type of junction that could meet the criteria? Or uh, I'm presuming, for example, uh, traffic lights wouldn't be something that you would consider, uh, but a roundabout would be uh, too large in a position on a club to put in. So is a right turning lane, for example, going to be enough? Um, as we, what what hasn't been concluded is the transport assessment to determine you know the, the vehicular traffic you know the trip generation you know the impacts you know when the peaks are to be able to understand the volume of traffic that will be used and when to determine you know what that junction should be you know yeah um, right hand turning lanes are a very common approach you know on such roads um, that hasn't you know the access hasn't been demonstrated to us in, in any case in, in sufficient detail. To be able to say yes, that that would be suitable, um, you know, for for that nature of road, there's not sufficient information to show that it would comply what what we call our standard design manual for roads and bridges. Given the key nature of this road, and, you know, and any departure from that standard will require you know, sign off by our director of engineering you know, in Belfast. So, you know, that level of detail isn't there for us to determine. Thank you. Any further questions, members? No. Thank you, Dar. Um, before I move on to questions, officers, members, um, I'm conscious that there's been um, that there's a lot of interest around this application, um, and I know um, that there has been quite a large a, a number of meetings that has been organised to discuss this meetings with council officers and others. And I just want to remind members that if anybody attended a meeting discussed this application in detail, um, then there's a requirement to declare an interest. Um, but the onus is on yourselves um, to declare an interest if you have been part of the conversations um, on in relation to this application. Is there any questions to Malagi? Councillor Kelly? Yeah, yeah, just really picking up on the last question on the, on the, the transport study and your previous comments around 
uh, the ability of the committee to um, effectively agree it and defer issuing an approval. Um, is it the case that, uh, that you find that a transport study would, would, if we kind of agreed in principle, would that nothing would happen until they were able to meet uh, and get signed off from uh, DFI roads? Is that right? Yeah, just members to remind you, we've been in this position before, and it's just, you know, in terms of the principle of the development and, and in terms of the principle of this proposal, you know, members, will, you know, will come to some, hopefully, conclusion on that today. However, as on previous occasions, if there are outstanding technical issues or important environmental issues that need to be addressed fundamentally from a legal perspective, we would be recommending members to take that on board before any decision um, would be issued. So, for instance, the traffic management transport assessment or anything, for instance, to do with EIA or HRA, um, but um, and maybe design and layout because you know we had previous circumstances where members um, went against officers' recommendation from a policy perspective for housing, for, um, but members were content that officers worked to, to improve the, 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 the final layout of the development. So it's very similar in that vein, um, Councillor Kelly, and I think members will recall that. So yes, um, uh, we would be recommending in those circumstances that um, all those issues would be taken into account. But we'd be directed by members in regard to that. And it may be the case that we can go ahead and issue a, a, a proposal or issue a decision. However, if something happens that's different, we would have a duty to bring it back to members if something emerged or there was something not resolved, we would bring it back. And we've done that before too. So comfortable that we will be able to manage. Yeah, thanks, Chair. I think that the last thing we want is to end up with, with uh, effectively the bypass anoma situation in Straban, where it's just uh, at peak times you just can't move on it, you're just parked. So that's that's good to hear. Um, and the other thing is, I think you know there has been some criticism of officers in terms of the zoning, and I and I think it's important to reflect back that officers haven't got uh, that latitude um, to to take those decisions. That's why it has to come to the committee. It has to be members. If there's a decision taken to effectively rezone within the context of an application, that has to be taken by the committee. Uh, so I think it's, it's a wee bit unfair uh, on officers just to kind of. Uh, to, to put that on them when they don't have that latitude uh, to make that sort of effective rezoning change. Councillor Boyle. Um, I would concur with uh, Councillor Kelly. Um, I think that's important. It's important that that is said uh, and, and, and at the outset, Chair. But just for clarity, for, for the benefit of all, um, uh, uh, clearly this is, a, this is an outline application and, and there has been some indication from a number of speakers, uh, very specifically the elected representatives that came before us. Um, uh, the, the, the suggestion had been chaired that uh, there might be an in-principle agreement, um, and Maura, uh, or indeed whomsoever, but effectively um, my, uh, my understanding would be an outline approval as effectively an in-principle agreement, and then you work through those various other um, challenges, would that be correct to say more? All right, through the chair, yes. Um, in outline permissions, um, there are certain issues that must be resolved before they can issue and can't be reserved until full or reserved matter stage. So the officers here will only be making recommendations regarding issues that are required to be resolved. But clearly, um, we can do that before we issue the decision. Today, members have uh, an opportunity to direct officers on the principle of the development and those other matters. Um, for instance, the application that was before members today, item one, the previous application was contrary to officers' recommendation way back two or three years ago, or maybe more. And in that instance, there was issues outstanding, which officers took six to eight, nine months, Sarah's gone, I can't give you the figure, um, before we actually issued that decision. And if there was any issues that had, had emerged contrary to what off, um, members would have imagined, for instance, environmental issues, we would have brought the application back to tell members this hasn't, you know, been resolved, you know, so 
there is a there is a route that members can take. Hopefully that answers the question. All right, thank you. Alderman McCondick. Thanks. Uh, I've sat back and listened to all of this, and I think I'm certainly very impressed by the arguments that I have heard from the elected reps and from uh, Joanne as well. Um, I think it is an ambitious project, and one that is certainly good to see that is so community-led. Um, and I can absolutely understand, coming from a community background, why the uh, group wouldn't want to spend more money without some reassurances. I see the only way forward is a deferral for those. Um, and I, I would be minded to overturn the recommendation, but I think that there, that there has to be um, that time for the applicant to produce the information that is required. So just my thinking on it. Thank you. Just for clarity, um, because uh, Alderman McClendick, you highlighted it, indicated that you would be minded to overturn the recommendation. If you were so minded, then that and that decision was the decision of the committee. It would allow officers at time to engage with the applicant, to allow those um, outstanding reports and outstanding information to be submitted before that the decision of this committee is is carried out so that it, it so in effect it would be um it would be deferred anyway. Um there, there's 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 a few indicated speakers. Um members there's just two points I want to make. First point is, um, as this would be contrary to the um, plan, um, the current plan, uh, in terms of notification procedures to DFI, this would be a case that we would have to notify the department on in the first instance. So I know, notice some members nodding, so they're aware of that. And secondly, I think there's some broad parameters here. We do, as what hasn't emerged in terms of the questioning, I really think it's important that um, you know, we need to talk about maybe some of the fundamentals in regard to this if we're making um, a, a decision before we, we get into the voting. Um, just if I could ask Suzanne just to highlight the, some of the things that have been raised by supporters or whatever. It's the clarification of the policy and why in planning terms your team has reported back in the manner it has. It's about the definitions because there's a somewhat slight confusion over some of the criteria and why it's been applied. And I just wouldn't mind, please, just before we, we move on, that you know it hasn't come out in questioning the officers. And, and just I think it's important that I just clarify that before you make any decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Martin, Chair. Um, OK, members, so clearly we have there's a recommendation to refuse in the report today. Um, and that is based on the contrary to the, pop, the area plan and contrary to the PPS3 and, and also in terms of information relating to the ecology information that's still outstanding. I suppose in terms of the roads issue in PPS3, the term regional significance um, first appears in, in AMP3 of PPS3. Okay, PPS3 doesn't define it. Um, but now we do have obviously the SPPS, which defines regional significance and regional significant applications. Um, the agent is quite right. When this application was submitted, it didn't meet our legal sort of points for is something regionally significant. Um, and I can see the agent's case today is more it's, it's a major application with uh, significant benefits, is what, what we're saying. But in terms of planning position, we have to take the view that um, the information to date on the case, there's no doubt this is a major a major proposal for Straban. Um, as planners, we can see that, but we're looking at those land use issues um, and the fact that uh, to date, on the information presented to date, there's nothing that would allow us to set aside PPS3 today. Okay. Um, in relation to the housing zoning, we know this is now the, probably the last, one of the very last uncommitted sites in Straban for housing. Um, and as Malachy's outlined, you know, this will effectively sterilise the rest of that zoning. Um, and I suppose the issue about the, the access and who owns the land and who can get 
ownership of the land is not an issue for planning the planning position in terms of this. Um, we, we don't get involved in key land disputes. Um, those are issues that, that we um, may be material but cannot be determining as we would see it as planners. Um, in terms of the ecology issues in the HRA, yes, um, more information would be required to allow us as a competent authority to conclude a habitat rights assessment. Um, is that, is that? Yeah, and in terms of the TA, um, I would be of the view that if further information is submitted to um, provide further details to satisfy AMP2, which is the park and turn in the service and the, the road junction, if it's a right hand turn lane and what it is, I would be of the view that we probably would bring that back to you because that's information that you wouldn't have had sight of before. But we can consider that again um, ourselves, but I think that would be probably the most rounded and sound way of, of if, if that's what you feel is material to your consideration today. So that's just a little brief roundup of the policy and why, why we have brought it today um, because uh, on the basis of what's currently on the file. Councillor Gallagher. Thank you, Chair. Um, again, I was, what I was going to say is, you know, before we move on, uh, the fundamentals needs to be, and, and can we uh, agree then before mo moving on, i.e. the major considerations uh, versus the material considerations? And we've heard a, a lot of those today. And when we talk about the protected route uh, and how much impact that would have on, on this opening have on that protected route when, there, when there's four others on there and in the absence of, of, a, of a detailed transport plan that could go into that, that this group, this application will be talking about planning further down the road. So if we can get past the protected route element, if we can get past the original, the regional significance, and we've heard today around the governance, and we've heard that there's no other project of this type around, and then that versus the exception, you know, that uh, this project could have, and then we talk about the zoning and other material factors coming in. Where we've heard a Beachmont Avenue project. 160 houses. Uh, we've seen Mount Carroll Heights, a lot of development going on, and, and the impact that the data's had on, on the housing in Straban. And, and then uh, and there was something that, that I wasn't getting my head around was this uh, regional significance, because it it's, it's comes up and it's coming up, and the same. Is this regional significance, is this a decision that gets made by locally, by decision makers as in councillors? Is this, is this a decision that gets made regionally by a minister, regional planning? Is this, when, it's, when this regional significance comes in through the report, are we saying this is for us to decide, and if we can't, if we can't decide that it's of reasonable significance, how does the applicant? Can, can I ask Moira to come on on that point? Uh, yeah. no, just, just let me finish. Just in that sense, how does? It, it, it seems like if it is a minister, how does it get passed? How does an applicant bring forward uh, a, an application? Spends fifty thousand pound. Gets asked to spend another 1820 a cost of seventy thousand pounds to your body, to a charitable body, to like this. Is, we're not talking about major investors who's got millions of pounds stacked on one side and saying we're bringing this forward, but get get asked to submit that and then say we we can't make a decision because it's a minister to make this, whether it's and this is like. A major consideration, the the significance. So we need to get past that today. Miguel, her, can you, you can't keep asking the question and not allow the answer. So.
Yeah, it's just really important that I make it very clear and clarify. There's a process when any application comes under the, the planning department anywhere in Northern Ireland. There's legislation that actually, um, you know, every case officer or every, anyone in planning must decipher whether or not an application is a local council application or if it becomes a DFA application. So I'm using those terms separately. But in planning and in, in the legislation, it uses words like local and regionally significant. So that is a test, it's an initial administrative test that we must carry out. We've carried out that test quite a while ago and we're comfortable that this is a local planning application and that the council will determine that application. The option of you know, going to DFI and asking is a matter for the agent or the applicant to do that if they so wish, but we gave our professional advice locally and we took, on, took what was in front of us and made that decision. So you know, we've processed it as a, as a committee council application. The issue of regional significance and the protected route is a different matter. It's a different criteria, and it's really important that I get that across, which is why at the outset I said there's a bit of confusion here. That's a different, completely different issue. So imagine that there's a separate administrative uh, process that goes on with every single plan and application in Northern Ireland, and then this particular issue of regional significance and the criteria in and around that and the weight and the consideration of that is something that you would do alongside all the other material considerations. And we, we do, as officers, have the right to give an opinion on that, which we've done in the report and which we've presented today. And you as a committee have a right to put a determination and, and a weight on that today. And that is, you know, your gift today to do that. So don't be frightened <laughs> about that today. I just want to make that clear. That is your position today to do that. So if there's any confusion about that, I think we should keep that separate to, to the, the actual determining factors. Thank you. Does that clear things up, Councillor Gellar? Chair, so, so, so Mara, you're saying is we can, we can set that to one side, the regional significance today. Planning officers have given their recommendation in a report today, right? It is our view, you know, we've, we've obviously given that view. It's up to the committee to, to, to consider the information that's put in front of them today regarding you had the DFI rules, DFI rules to for us to give them um, a, a, an opinion on the criteria in front of us uh, uh, in terms of the current policy. So I think what we're saying is it's, it's what determining weight you want to put on the information that was put to you via the, the report and via the presentations made today. So it's a matter for the committee um, now to, 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 make, to take that view about whether or not it's, it passes um, that criteria. Sorry, is, that, is there anything else there, Philip, that I might, I'm sorry, I can't see Philip, um, that, I, that he might want to add to that? <laughs> Um, Councillor Dobbins. Okay, thanks very much, Chair. Um, look, I'd like to make a proposal then that we um, defer it with view, accept in, accept, acceptance in principle and defer with view that more information will come on. And that not be done. Well, that's, a, that's a proposal to overturn the application, which would require um, a policy reason. A policy reason? Well, I don't agree that it's insignificant. So, where's Cian McGuire? <laughs> right, Cian? Alderman McClintock? For clarification, because Councillor Gallagher is not the only one confused where I am now, I'm beginning to not want, wish I hadn't proposed anything. Um, what, what I was trying to do was to give time for the applicant with some sort of assurance, and I hear that if it's a local decision, we can do that. So, what's the difference in what Councillor Dobbins is proposing and what I said? Could you clarify the difference? 
At the very beginning, before we started the item, we did unfortunately try, but we didn't do it very well, Chair. Um, clearly what we're, we're saying is that we have done this before, members. We have been in a situation where something in principle where there might be a difference of opinion in terms of what officers are recommending and what members want to do in terms of an overturn on a policy issue and in principle. There might be technical issues in regard to some reason for refusal which basically means that officers can't issue that particular decision the next day but need to pursue those outstanding matters either with the applicant, i.e. to submit further reports and go to statutory bodies those statutory bodies will require potentially coming back. Now, Suzanne has outlined one of the key things would concern us. Two key things would concern us is that the members would need to understand any traffic assessment um, repercussions, um, you know, because clearly there might be other considerations should there be a new right hand turn lane and new accesses. And secondly, should there be uh, reports, obviously have to be submitted regarding environmental issues like the HRA and the officers are recommending clearly that we would need to probably bring that back to make sure there's nothing new. But the decision might be that in principle that we would, um, ex there was an overturn of the, the principle of it in order to pursue those other matters. And then members may ask us to proceed to um, issue the decision. One way or the other. Essentially, what it, you you were proposing that we overturn the officer's recommendation. The only thing that we were missing was the policy reason. Um, Councillor Boy, Chair, uh, I think in this instance we could overturn it, and we could overturn it on the, in the interests of, of, of community and public immunity. Um, and the fact I say that this committee also. Um, believe, or certainly it's our assessment, that uh, this is actually a regionally significant application. And it may well be up to others then to decide whether they agree with us or not. Um, and that's notwithstanding all of the other challenges that have been widely discussed, of course, in relation to this um, application. Um, but, but I think some freedom to work through those, and this is my suggestion, that that, that, is, that is potentially, and I think it is the reason that we can um, overturn the decision for now. It's probably likely going to come in front of us again, Chair. Um, Councillor Dobbins, do you accept that? Yep. Is there anybody else? Councillor Kelly? Thanks, Chair. Um, I'm just uh, a wee bit concerned and would like a wee bit of clarification around if the committee determine that it is a regionally significant application, what are the implications for the applicant? Uh, in terms of uh, a transport study, traffic management study, uh, car parking, because does that raise the bar uh, for them to a, a level which they may not be able to reach? Um, so are there any implications in terms of us doing that? Uh, or, or is it, you know, that they'll be fine? Okay. Yeah, okay, so if, if members today feel that the application is regionally significant, um, the I, I suppose the transport assessment details will have to be looked at on that basis, okay, and to the scale and the extent of the use of the site, okay, so they, we will be looking for that information on behalf of roads, but, all, but ultimately there are, there are current road standards, which obviously Darren would be able to talk about better than me, but the only implication after today will be that we would have to notify the department of eventually of, our, of the decision to of the decision to proceed to, contrary to the plan and contrary to um, the AMP3. Councillor, do you finish, uh, Councillor Boy? Yeah, just to say, Chair, and it, you know, it, again, it came up in, in, in some of the presentations, and it's actually the lack of definition, in the true sense of the word definition, and clarity and how focused. Um, decision making is around who decides and what is um, a regionally significant development. It's been already said, this is not Caseman Park we're talking about, um, albeit it's, and obviously that was very heavily mired in controversy, um, uh, but again, I am, and there's no real definition for me either of what the region is that's being considered. Is it the Northwest region? Is it the 
all the entirety of the, of the north. I mean, and it doesn't seem to be clearly enough defined. Um, Philip, do you want to come and provide some clarity? Hopefully. Well, I'm not sure about clarity, but members, it, it does seem to me that um, we're, we're in some ways a simpler option. Uh, I mean, it's, it's very clear to officers what the mood of the committee is in relation to this application as it currently stands. And it's certainly clear to officers that the mood of the committee is that they would like to see this application progressed where at all possible. Um, there are a number of significant hurdles which still must be overcome in terms of traffic management and in terms in particular of the HRA will be required um, before any final determination can be made in relation to this matter. Um, there is, I would have thought, um, sufficient that has been said by the members here today that would provide comfort to the applicant um, that that next step is a step which they would be prepared to take um, and therefore this matter would ultimately with that information I think is inevitably going to have to come back to this committee in any event. I don't see any way in which we could avoid bringing back the HRA and the traffic management information in due course in any event and perhaps it allows the maximum flexibility uh, in terms of the approach that can be taken by officers in conjunction with the applicant if we do seek now to defer this application generally and um, to allow those additional steps to be taken um, and I would hope um, that that would provide sufficient comfort to the applicant uh, to be prepared to go forward and take those next steps at the minute if that was a route that the committee was minded to go down rather than necessarily tying ourselves down in relation to policy decisions uh, which may be matters that we would wish to revisit uh, whenever we have the additional information in front of us in due course in any event because there would be implications certainly with the traffic issues about making a determination on regional significance today. Um, Councillor Evans. Thank you, and thanks very much, Philip. So I don't need a, a policy number. So with that in mind, I would like to um, propose that um, what Philip has just said, that we go ahead with that. <laughs> Put it in English. <laughs> Yeah, that's what the, it, in essence it, we, you're, you're proposing that we defer the application and allow for further information. Councillor Boyle? Okay. Is there any further comments, members? Councillor Kelly? Chair, can we at this juncture then uh, inform the department uh, that the committee uh, could be minded um, to depart from the area plan to get a steer or is it too premature? At this junction, I'm just thinking in terms of speeding the process. Yeah, we just discussed with Philip there. It would probably, I mean, obviously we, we can't do it formally until we've got the decision um, made by the committee. However, it would do, there would be no issue with in the interim sending a clarification to put them on note that this is members are, are of, a, of mind to overturn this and that in the interim they're working through technical matters and um, just leave it at that so it's, it's they've been put on note. Is that okay? Yep. Yep. Thank you. I have no problem if you want.
we're, we're really breaking protocol here, but um, I know I really appreciate it. Um, it's just a point of a clar clarification for the applicant: is that what the applicant would seek is is that they um, they that this is deemed as a major application, um, and that the principle of the development is agreed in terms of the the two issues that we've talked about, which are the access onto the protected route, and that that it is on land zoned for housing. Those are just the two key criteria, so that they know that when the application is being deferred for the reports to be prepared, that they still have the comfort when they're spending that additional money. Because, yeah? I think the advice that we've received would be that that advice, or that the comfort would be that the comments from the members, um, but um, we, it would be premature for us to take that decision um, at this stage without that information. Proposal not that we support this in principle yeah. and defer the application for the uh, the reports to be done. Was that not? Yeah. That's, that's exactly that's exactly. But I wasn't clear if that was what was being said. I thought that we were saying that was what was being suggested was a deferral to that's make the decision. But no, that's I my point. So that it is acceptance in principle. I think that needs to be clarified again. Can I see before I bring follow back on Councillor Mooney. Thank you, Chair. Uh, that was the actual sort of suggestion I was thinking on because obviously um, we were seeking in principle on the principle of agreement at this stage. I was thinking of I, I was on the opinion was sort of on a without prejudice basis that the uh, agreement is deferred um, getting reports. But subject to that, I mean, I'm not. The options that are open to members are to ask for them to overturn the officer recommendation in relation to this, in which case you have to give all the relevant reasons that are required in relation to this to accept the officer recommendation in relation to this matter, um, which would kill the thing here and now, or to defer. Um, now, I think we are struggling a wee bit uh, today in terms of an agreement in principle. And the terminology that Councillor Minet is using in terms of without prejudice is probably what we are saying. What we're saying to the applicant today in terms of the proposal that's come forward from Councillor Dobbins is you've heard everything that the members have to say here today. You can take them out of the room and so on in relation to that. But ultimately, in order to make the final determination in relation to this matter, we're going to need this additional documentation anyway. Um, I think that's that's the option, but it's a matter for members. I mean, it is a matter for members. Mr. Kelly? Really, the comfort is found in the fact that we are deferring, uh, because if we if we didn't agree in principle, we would be just, we would be you know, rejecting, and we would be accepting the officer recommendation it will be going out the door today. Clearly, members are of a view that there is very much merit in this application, and with that additional information, it's going to get over the line. Um, so, surely, the fact of the deferral is the comfort. Is is, is that fair? That's that's very logical. Um, are you content with that, um, Councillor Evans? Councillor Boyle, did you second that proposal? I just want to get her. Did you want to come on in that before I go to a vote? Uh, just before you go to a vote, like Councillor Kelly just said there, like a lot of concerns. You know, the applicant was was at a, at a position where they gave some commitment here today that they would follow up with those reports, and I think that I. When we got those reports, and following on from today, that people that like are, are are minded and supportive and, and saying, I think the report coming in after those reports will be a totally different report than we see today. You know, and a lot of the concerns that have that have been raised and are on the report, 
will be gone. And I think that we might be in a different place uh, when those reports are, are, are submitted. Okay, members, there's no further comments. And um, we have a proposal to defer this application. They await further information by Councillor Dobbins, seconded by Councillor Boyd. Um, all those in favour? That's unanimous, members. Members, just um, briefly, um, can I ask for a proposal to go on to confidential? Councillor Kelly, um, Councillor Minnie? Not on my agenda. I've not on my agenda. You never give me seven days' notice, too.